at 11.07pm on the 20th of February 2003 at the Station Nightclub in West Warwick, Rhode Island, pyrotechnics used as part of a concert by the hard rock band Great White set fire to acoustic foam surrounding the stage. The flames spread with incredible speed. As patrons rushed to escape, exits became jammed. All in all, 100 people lost their lives, and hundreds more were injured and traumatised, all in the space of just a few short minutes. The fire started just seconds into the band's opening song. Pyrotechnics designed to create a controlled shower of sparks had been set up on either side of the stage. Two fountains were directed straight up, and two were angled off at 45 degrees. As Great White took to the stage and launched into their song Desert Moon, tour manager Daniel Bichel triggered these pyrotechnics. It was the angled fountains that were principally responsible for igniting the acoustic foam which surrounded the stage. Video of the incident shows the fire taking hold, reaching the ceiling in a matter of seconds. Patrons were initially slow to evacuate. This may have been because they believed that the fire was part of the act. The music video for the song, which the band were playing, showed the musicians surrounded by flames. Not long after the pyrotechnics ended, though, the band ceased to play and the lead vocalist, Jack Russell, calmly spoke into the microphone while looking at the blaze. That's not good, he said. The band members fled the nightclub via an exit beside the stage. Realising the danger they were in, the crowd began to evacuate as well. The station nightclub had several exits, but most patrons were unfamiliar with the layout of the building, and so flocked towards the main entrance and exit. The narrow corridor leading up to this door was swiftly jammed with bodies. 462 people were in the building when the fire began. 58 more than the venue's official capacity. In the chaotic rush to escape, many people were trampled. The main exit became clogged completely with bodies, with patrons wedged in so tight that even those who had already escaped couldn't pull them free. In addition to the deaths caused by crushing and trampling, many also died from smoke inhalation. The acoustic foam gave off a dense, opaque, toxic smoke when it burned, which not only made it extremely difficult to navigate the building, but also caused death after just a few breaths. In total, 100 people died on scene as a result of crush-related injuries, smoke inhalation, and from burns from the fire itself. Among the dead were Ty Longley, the lead guitarist of Great White. It is reported that he initially escaped unscathed, but, miscalculating the severity of the fire, returned to the building to try and rescue his guitar. Ty Longley was the only member of the band to perish in the fire. The other members of Great White escaped through a door adjacent to the stage, a door which at least some audience members were prevented from using by a bouncer who stated adamantly that the exit was for the band only. With so many dead and the nightclub destroyed, thoughts turned to who to blame for the disaster. The nightclub owners said they did not give permission for the band to use pyrotechnics. Band members claimed they did have permission. Meanwhile, an investigation revealed that fire safety inspectors should long ago have demanded the installation of a sprinkler system into the ancient building. The two brothers who owned the nightclub and Great White's manager were charged with 200 counts of manslaughter each, two for each victim, as it was alleged that they had committed both criminal negligence manslaughter and misdemeanor manslaughter. While the nightclub owners pleaded not guilty, Great White's manager, Daniel Bichel, pled guilty, stating that he wished the investigation to be over quickly so that the families of the victims could achieve closure. Bichel was sentenced to four years in prison, with an additional suspended sentence. Many of the families of the deceased were supportive of him, with some even writing letters that noted their forgiveness and asking for him to be freed from prison. He was released after serving just two years in jail. The two nightclub owners were given similar sentences, with one of them facing four years in jail and the other three years of probation. 
the difference in their sentences was down to the different levels of responsibility they each had for the purchase and installation of the flammable foam. Numerous civil suits worked their way slowly through the courts, with the largest resulting in a settlement of $25 million from a company that manufactured the foam. Five months after the fire, Great White went on a benefit tour. They began each set with a prayer for those who had lost their lives in the fire, and donated a portion of their proceeds to a fund to support the surviving relatives. For many years, they refused to play the song they had been playing when the fire began, but eventually added it to their repertoire again in 2009. The site of the fire was cleared, and survivors and loved ones of the deceased left numerous crosses as memorials to the dead. A permanent memorial was eventually erected on the site, and it is now a park which sees a memorial service on the 20th of February each year. While the fire was a terrible and costly one, it did result in an almost instant improvement in fire safety across the board. A moratorium was placed on the use of pyrotechnics in small venues, and many nightclubs undertook programs of rapid improvement to bring their premises up to code. While the 100 music lovers who died during the station nightclub fire might have died unnecessarily, their deaths, at least, were not in vain.